Hey, folks, welcome to Wake Up Charlotte to Go, where this morning, once again, we are talking about the, the murder case involving Alec Murda, a prominent Southern uh, South Carolina attorney down in the low country. And today, today, the jury actually might start deliberations this afternoon. We've been talking about this all week long. And of course, this is one of the top things trending online yeah. um, after the HBO documentary Netflix. It's not just people in the Carolinas looking at this. This is a global Everybody. story. Yeah. And so um, we want to know, are you following along with the trial? Have you watched the documentaries? What do you think? Uh, we're going to have Katie Beck give us a wrap yeah. um, and then we'll talk about it on the other side of the story. Alec Murdoch was living a lie and would do anything to protect it. That's why the prosecution says he was the only one with motive and means to murder. The forensic timeline puts him there. Prosecutors describe a gathering storm, unbearable pressure bearing down on Murdoch in the weeks and months before the murders. Confronted for stealing money from his firm and about to be financially exposed by a civil case after the 2019 boat crash involving his son Paul and they were all reaching a crescendo the day his wife and son were murdered by him. Prosecutors again pointing to the lie Murdoch admitted on the stand, that he was never at the kennels that night. When was the last time I saw my wife and child alive? Why in the world would an innocent, reasonable father and husband lie about that? And a graphic description of Alex shooting Paul in the feed room with the family gun and Maggie, who heard and saw the horrific moment just moments before her own death. She was running to her baby, heard that shot and was running to her baby when she got mowed down. Reminding the jury of how moments after the murders, Murdoch struggled to explain why he was tracking so many steps and why some details, the ones that help him, are crystal clear in an ever-changing manufactured alibi story. He's asking questions like that. He's trying to figure out what do the police have. Replaying various interviews Alec gave investigators. I stayed on the couch and I dozed off. The crime scene shown to the jury Wednesday morning, taken from the court to the 1,700-acre Moselle property to walk the kennels, the feed room, and the outside of the former Murdoch home. Prosecutors concluding their arguments with this. He's fooled them all. And he fooled Maggie and Paul, too. and they paid for it with their lives. Don't let him fool you too. And so that's where things left off. Uh, last night, the prosec prosecution uh, with their closing arguments. This morning, uh, we are expecting in the next two hours, uh, the defense to offer their closing arguments before the jury starts deliberations. I was listening to an attorney not associated with this case weigh in on the Today Show and some interesting things that she said uh, with the prosecution saying he did this because he was trying to distract from his financial crimes. Well, her argument was, why would you do this? It would bring more attention uh, to you and your family. Um, and she also noted, you know, a lot of stuff has come out about the Snapchat video. Yeah. And, and they've honed in on that, that he, see, he was right there right before the murders. Um, and she said in that Snapchat video, they're all getting along, they're talking, no one's upset. So she said she would, if she, you know, she would focus on that as, as an attorney in, in yeah. the trial, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Uh, weigh in. Let us know what you think so far. Stu says guilty as hell. Daniel says guilty as well. Uh, Joy says he's guilty. Uh, Michelle saying guilty. I think um, I'm not privy to any information in this case that not everybody else is watching. Yeah. Just from my you know sort of uh, point of view, I, I do think the prosecution has done an expert job in painting him to be a shady character. And but, continually but not, lying. But, but that's not what he's on trial for. Right. Um, I, I think it does get problematic when you start thinking about, which was Lord Jarrett's point, is it, it, he's facing all this financial pressure. I, I'm still having a trouble connecting the dots why that would then motivate someone to kill their wife and son. I think that would put you under more scrutiny, not less. And 
And if you're wanting to distract from your financial crimes, which he has now admitted to on, on the stand, I would think there'd be far more effective ways for a well-educated lawyer, right. attorney, who knows the system, better ways to do it. Um, we should note, even though he is on trial, um, he is already admitted to dozens of financial crimes and could face over 700 years in prison for those crimes alone. So no matter what happens with this case, you know, he's, he's still facing a lot of jail um, time, yeah. possible jail time. Um, so I think uh, the timeline for today is, is whether or not um, or how long the jury will deliberate. Th this case already five weeks long, already longer than expected uh, down there at Walterboro. Um, now a question becomes of how long the jury deliberates and what's always telling as well, the kinds of questions they ask because they're allowed to ask the judge for anything they want as far as uh, uh, revisiting a certain part of the testimony or something like that and it's always in the judge's discretion. So what they're, that's often telling about what their mindset is. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that will be interesting to see. And then, of course, how long they actually deliberate. You know, if, if this goes on for days yeah. and days and days, what that means possibly for Alec Murdoch or what it doesn't mean for him. One of our producers said they thought, you know, they were all on a hotel floor. You know, they can't speak to anyone. And this judge is evidently known for making you come to a decision. They, he does not want a hung jury. He wants, he wants them to come to a decision on this. As we've talked about getting 12 people to agree on something. It's very, especially in today's day and age, it's difficult. Uh, yeah, and especially something like this where you, you know some people had some strong opinions. Um, but they did, like we said, they did go out uh, to the property. Yep. They did not go in the house, but they, they parked right outside the house. They walked around. Um, Which you think has got to be helpful for the jury. I mean, To see like where everything was. And, you know, yeah. um, the defense saying, uh, raising the question of, they think there were two shooters there. There was DNA evidence under Maggie's fingernails that do not match her husband. Um, and, and you had mentioned earlier the, de um, the defense was saying that, you know, they never even looked at anyone. It was him and they thought it was him all along. And so. And the defense makes that argument that, that they were so locked on Alec Murdoch that they did not look at other possible leads. Um, Victoria is talking about the kid who, who got beat, uh, the maid, the girl on the boat. And so and so totally I, again, I think I think the prosecution has done a, a great job and the media as well, um, to a certain extent, sort of putting out a, a damning portrayal of not only Alec Murdoch, but also this family. If you've seen any of the, the Netflix specials or any of the other ones, you know, there's been multiple deaths associated, mm -hmm. associated with this family over the last 10 years um, under less than than savory circumstances. Um, I, I think, too, when you watch those documentaries, um, even though it goes into the whole past with this family, it also makes you think, wow, I'm sure a lot of people did have a vendetta against them. Quite possibly. You know, um, uh, James, we're getting James, a lot of comments now. I know. James uh, making an interesting comment uh, just a second ago. There's a few. But wait, Ryan wait. saying he thinks guilty, uh, but <coughs> he thinks it will be a hung jury because prosecution didn't prove without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, yeah, James um, saying circumstantial yes. case, he will walk. All and so that's all they need. One juror. That's all doubt. they need. And I, that's a really high threshold. Um, Just to, to me, have one, one juror one person, say, you know what, I'm not 100 percent sure. And all you have to do is is plant that seed of doubt. And if they if they don't think he did it, all you need, all you need is one juror there. Angie, Angie said, I would love to ask Alec, if you say you didn't do it, who do you think did it and why? That would be interesting. That would be interesting. But I mean, obviously, with all his financial crimes, there are a yeah. lot of people that were close to him that were that were obviously very upset with what he did. And and that's kind of what um, they talked about in court, that he lied to so many years for so many years to people he was close to about the financial crimes. Yeah. And then he lied about being there and about then, his drug use. Yes. To, to, and he didn't come clean until that Snapchat video was yeah. revealed. So, you know, they said in in court, why? Well, aren't you just continuing to lie here? So yeah, and it definitely strikes at his credibility. Whether or not it's enough for twelve people to agree that he's guilty of a right. double murder is, right. is is a is a big big deal. All right, folks, continue to chime in. Who knows? We might get you know some sort of result as of today. I doubt it, but, I doubt it too. It, it, but it, you never know. It could happen. Maybe they'll all agree on something, right? Let us know what you think, and we'll be back here tomorrow morning for another edition of Wake Up Charlotte to Go.